welcome back to Gapy's Kitchen. Today we're going to be making a hot sauce. This one's going to be a green ghost hot sauce. So I've got some green unripe ghost peppers here. And these are actually red ghost peppers. Um, so I picked them before they're ripe so that we could make a green hot sauce. I didn't grow any green peppers this year, so I thought I would give this a try. I also picked a few of these scotch bonnets. These are the Elysium Oxide Red Scotch bonnets that are really nice. So I'm going to use those two varieties of peppers, and then I've also got some green tomatoes that I picked a few days ago. And these are just barely, barely starting to turn color, um, but they're still pretty green. So I'm going to be using these, and I'm going to be doing a ferment. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is get these washed. So I'm just going to run these under some cold water. All right, before we get too far, we need to make the brine. So I like to use a 3.5% brine for my pepper ferments, and that is 500 milliliters of water, which is pretty close to two cups. And then we have 18 grams of salt, and I like to use non-iodized sea salt. And I'm just using the, it's pretty cheap, it's this Hain Pure Foods brand. So it's available in most, most places. But you can use pretty much any kind of salt as long as it's non-iodized. So I'm just going to stir this around a little bit and try and get the salt dissolved. Some people heat the water up, um, but then you have to wait for it to cool down. So I, I find if you use small um, salt crystals, then it'll dissolve pretty fast. If you're using the large size crystals, you might want to heat up your water because they take a little bit longer to dissolve. All right, and we'll just set that aside. We, I'm sure we won't use all that water. One cup probably would have been enough, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. All right, so let's get our stuff together. Now, one thing you need to be sure of is to get these, some nice gloves. These are just nitrile disposable gloves when you're working with hot peppers, especially ghost peppers, which are super hot. So I'm also going to be putting some apple and some garlic in this ferment. And this is all stuff that I got from my garden. So I want to keep it a green color. Um, this is a, a Braeburn apple, so the inside is, is pretty kind of a whitish green color. So that shouldn't affect the, the color too much. And then we've got our peppers and our tomatoes. So I'm going to kind of do these in layers. I'm going to start with some tomatoes first. And I'm not sure, since they're green, they may not be, there may not be a lot of liquid in these. We'll see. Okay, so there is quite a bit of, of seeds and stuff in here. So I am going to go ahead and scoop those out into the, the recycle. And I'm actually not sure what variety these tomatoes are. These were my volunteer tomatoes that showed up in my garden. And I looked through my history of, of stuff that I grew for tomatoes the last few years and I couldn't find anything that looked like these so I have no idea what they are or where they came from. So I'm just gonna kind of rough chop these into smallish pieces and then we're gonna put these into a quart size jar. So I'm gonna fill this up about to here um, with tomatoes and then we'll move on to the peppers. I forgot I've also got a monster tomatillo that I'm going to be adding. So this thing is almost the size of an apple, but it, it's a pretty good size. Um, I've never seen one this big before, so I thought this would be a good use for it. So I'm going to go ahead and wash that first. All right, and we'll just cut that up. I'm going to kind of cut the core out. We don't want that in there. We're getting close to halfway. I may add some more tomatoes here at the end. All right, now let's add some apple. So I think I'm going to take some of the peel off because the, the skin is red. And we don't want our sauce to turn pink. Probably would have been easier to use a peeler. I think I will do that. This should be a little easier. So 
I don't think I'm going to use the whole apple. I think I'll probably just use half of it. So I'll put that much in there for now. So I, I never follow a recipe. I just kind of put stuff in as I go along. Um, all right, next, let's go with the, put some garlic, garlic in there next. A little hard to peel when you're wearing gloves. This might be the music garlic. These are pretty big cloves. I think we'll go ahead and use, there's only three cloves in that whole head. But they are quite large. So I think we'll go ahead and use all three of those. I'm just going to roughly chop these. Now let's go ahead and we'll put these away for, for later. And let's go ahead and do some peppers. So I have no idea how hot these ghosts are going to be since they're not ripe. Um, I've got quite a few here, so we're going to risk it. I think I might go ahead and leave the seeds in. It smells pretty spicy. Normally I would remove the seeds, but since these are unripe peppers, they shouldn't be too bitter, I hope. So I'm just kind of putting, cutting these in slices. So if there's any brown seeds like that one, you see a couple here, I'm going to remove those because those are not, not good seeds to have in your, in your sauce. So these um, scotch bonnets usually have a pretty big amount of seeds, so I am going to go ahead and remove that because they're, they're really easy to remove because they're all in one big clump towards the stem. Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and add another garlic now. I'm starting to get a little full here. I'm going to add a couple more tomatoes now. Okay, we're getting pretty full. I'm going to add a couple more peppers and then I think we'll be done. Actually, let me do a little bit more apple. I'm going to do one pepper, I think, and we'll do a scotch bonnet. And then I think that will be all we need. We don't want it to get too full or else it will overflow while it's fermenting. So you want to leave about an inch or two space on top. So we're just going to press these down really good. And I'm actually going to put some honey in here as well. I'm not going to measure it, but I'm probably going to put about a tablespoon or so of honey. And what else? Okay, let's go ahead and give the brine a stir. And all the salt should be pretty well dissolved by now. And then we'll fill that up until it just covers the vegetables and fruit. Let all the air come to the top. I like to give it a little shake to kind of remove the air bubbles that are in there. Get a press as well. So you want to make sure your vegetables and fruit stay below the below the brine. And I have some fermentation weights that I use. And I have two different kinds. And I'll show you both of them. So I have this really thin glass one. And it's it's not very heavy. And then I have this other one that's really thick. Um, but, I, but this one is a lot heavier. And I found that this heavier one does a better job because the lighter one, it just gets pushed up and then you get all the, this, a bunch of space on the bottom and the, it just pushes this up. So the, the heavier ones I like better because it really keeps, keeps everything down a lot better. And then I use a fermentation lid. And I just got some new ones that I heard about from Peter Stanley. Um, and they're pretty similar to the ones I've been using, but it's got, it's the kind you use for brewing beer and, and mead, and it's what I use for mead. But it's got these two pieces here, um, and you put this one on the inside, and then you fill it with water, and it allows um, no air to get into the container. And then it's got this lid here, and there's a, 
silicone ring, silicone ring inside to keep it airtight. And then this is the something different that my other ones don't come with. Um, it's got this little little guy here that you press into the the center. Let's see if I can get it in there. There we go. And then this fits in the inside, or you can take this and plug the hole up, which is pretty neat. So my other ones don't do that. I'll show you my other ones real quick. So basically the same thing. Um, the hole is actually on the side and not the middle, um, but it's got the same little doohickey that you put on top. And this thing, it's got a, a rubber thing here, but I don't doesn't look like it comes out, or at least it doesn't come out very easily. But it's got the silicone ring on the inside as well. So we're going to go ahead and get this put together. All right, and we'll seal her up. And these lids come in different colors. I decided to use the green one because it it goes with the, the green hot sauce. But I think there's a blue and a pink, and I can, I'm not sure what other colors, but um, I, that's one of the reasons I like this one. It's just more colorful. Um, and then we're going to fill that up with water. And you can actually fill it up with the extra brine that you have. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that. So you want to fill it about halfway. One thing I like to do right now, the this bubble is kind of floating. Um, if you open the lid, it'll sink to the bottom. And then you can close it back up. So that way you know when the fermentation starts. It might take a few days for it to start, but once it does, you'll see this little center thing start floating again. All right, and then we're just going to let it sit. I usually like to let my ferment sit for a few months. Um, some people only do it a few weeks, but I like, I like to age mine longer. So I will show you the next step after the fermentation is done. Oh, and another thing I wanted to mention is make sure you check on it just in case. Um, I'm noticing this, the brine is a little bit higher than I, I normally, I normally do. Um, so I'm a little bit worried that it might be too high. So I just need to check on it every day just to make sure that this little thing doesn't start overflowing. And if it does, I may need to take some of that brine out. Um, but we'll see how it goes. And I will be back again soon. It's only been about six hours and I'm already starting to see signs of fermentation. If you look at these little fermentation airlocks, these guys are already floating, both of them. So that means that the fermentation has begun and we're well on our way to making a fermented hot sauce. Hey guys, we are back and finally ready to blend up our hot sauce. And I've got my notes here. The hot sauce was started on September 24th, 2019. And it's now July 8th. So that's nine and a half months of fermenting on this hot sauce, which is the longest I've ever gone with fermentation. Usually I go about three months at least, three to four months is typically what most of my hot sauces are, but I don't know, I got lazy or just didn't get around to it, was too busy, but nine and a half months. So that is gonna be good and ready. So since it was such a long ferment, we don't have to pasteurize it because it's, it's pretty much going to be done fermenting if you wait that long. So if you do a really quick ferment, like some people do a couple weeks or, you know, one month or so, in those cases, it's probably going to keep fermenting after you bottle it and you could have some bottles explode. So if you do a shorter ferment, you definitely want to pasteurize it. Um, basically, you want to boil it for 15, 20 minutes. And I really don't like to do that. It kills all the beneficial bacteria that are created when you do the fermentation. And also the results is a much smaller amount because when you boil it, a lot of that is gonna get reduced. So you don't have as much hot sauce left over after you're done pasteurizing. So that's a couple of reasons why I don't like doing it. But if you're gonna add some additional fruit to your ferment after it's done fermenting, then you definitely want to pasteurize it because adding fruit to it after it's done fermenting is going to get the fermentation started back up again. 
So you definitely want to pasteurize that. And then I did do that with one of my hot sauces this year. I added some additional, I think it was blueberries that I added um, fresh after it was fermented. So I went ahead and pasteurized that one. So the first thing we're going to do now that we're ready to bottle is we're going to sanitize everything that the hot sauce is going to come in contact with. And what I like to use is this star sand. People use for brewing beer and wine, and I use it for, for making mead. But it's, this is great for any kind of fermentation products that you're going to be bottling. So all it takes is just, and this is a huge bottle, this is going to last me a lifetime, because you only need a really small amount of this star sand mixed with water, and that will last you quite a while. So I like to put this in a spray bottle. So I'm going to be spraying down um, the blender, the hot sauce bottles, um, pretty much everything that I'll be using. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So here we have our spray bottle with the star sand mixture in it. And I've got my bottles here. So all we need to do is put a couple of spritz in the bottle, shake it up, and then pour out any excess, and then move on to the next one. So it's a pretty easy process. So one quart of hot sauce ferment usually fills up a little over four of these woozy bottles. I think these are eight ounces if I remember right. So I've got five of these bottles ready for filling. Then I've also got the lids here. So I'm just going to spray a couple spritz into each of the lids. And then we've got our funnel here. This is the, what we're going to use to fill the bottle so we don't make a mess. So I'm going to do the inside as well as the, the bottom part there. And then I've got this measuring cup that I'm going to use to hold the brine while I blend the solid, the solid parts. And then of course we have our blender. So I'm going to do both the lid as well as the bottom. All right, it takes, I believe it's two to three minutes for this to activate. So we're going to go ahead and let this sit for a couple minutes and then we can get started. Before we get started, I wanted to show you what the ferment looks like after nine and a half months. So we did get a little bit of a white film on the top. Let me just take this off so you can see it a little better. So there is some white film on top and that's called cam yeast. So that's not mold and that's perfectly fine. I am going to scrape that off before I blend it though because it probably doesn't really taste all that great. Um, but it's, it's perfectly harmless and normal. And then also we need to remove our weight that's in there. And I wanted to mention if you see anything other than a white film on top of your ferment, it's probably garbage and you want to throw it out. So if you see anything with any kind of blue, black, um, green, brown, any kind of color to it, that's not a good kind of mold and you, you definitely want to get rid of that. So I'm going to go ahead and scrape the top off of that and it comes off pretty easily. I've got a, another bowl here that I'm just going to put the excess stuff in that I don't want. So that's our garbage container. And you don't have to get every little bit out. Um, it should be totally fine. Okay, now um, I'm going to go grab the sanitizer. I just want to sanitize my fingers really quick because I'm going to be taking out that fermentation weight um, and I don't want my fingers to be dirty, although I did clean them very well before this. So I didn't, I don't think I mentioned in the previous video, but another reason I like these really big weights is because they're really easy to get out. They have this little handle on top, so you could just pull it right out. While the other one that I showed, it's really difficult to get out of the jar. So you'll probably find that there's a little bit of excess star sand in the bottom of each of these containers. So I'm just going to pour that excess out into this other container. So now I'm just going to pour out as much of the brine as I can into this container. It's okay if a few chunks escape. So that's probably good enough. Now I'm going to pour the solids into the blender. And then we need our lid. And we're just going to blend this up for a couple minutes. We want it nice and blended. We'll start out low speed and then work our way up. I'm going to turn this down a little bit and I'm going to add one more ingredient. This is xanthan gum. 
So this will help keep it from separating. If you don't add this, then you'll notice that a lot of liquid will show up at the top of your bottles, which is totally fine, but I like to, to add this to keep it separate. And I'm gonna add probably about an eighth of a teaspoon to one quart. And you wanna add this while it's blending so that it doesn't clump. So we'll just blend it for a little more. So while that's blending, I'm gonna pour the excess star sand that's in these bottles into this cup. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and add this extra brine. Some people don't use it, but I like to use all of it into the hot sauce, and this will just make it a little bit more thin. If you like a chunkier sauce, you can leave it out, or you can just add a little bit in, however much you like. And if you wanna make it even thinner, you can add some vinegar, but I don't think we'll need any vinegar for this batch. We'll let it go for another minute. Okay, I think we are done. So now it's time to get these filled. I'm just gonna scrape out all of the little bits from inside the lid here. So we don't want any to go to waste. Do you wanna move all the jars close together so you don't make too much of a mess? And it helps to lift the, the funnel just a little bit because you, if you leave it down, it'll create an airlock and it won't come out very well. So I usually lift it just a little bit to let some air into the bottle. So I usually like to fill it as high as I can, hopefully without making a mess. That might be a little too full, um, but there is air that's in the bottle that will come up to the top and it'll create more head space. So the level will go down after it sits for a little while. I filled that one a little too high. That one is perfect. Looks like we won't quite need that fifth bottle. Oop, yes we will. <laughs> I haven't underestimated how much was left. So I made a little bit of a mess. Right. So there are some inserts that come with these bottles, but I'm gonna hold off adding those inserts until after these settle a little bit because I may want to add a little bit more to some of those bottles. Um, so here is our lids here, and there's still star sand in these, so I'm gonna, just gonna dump the star sand into this container here. And I'm gonna go grab a paper towel. So before I put these lids on, I'm gonna spray a paper towel, and I'm just gonna use this to wipe the tops of these jars so that they're nice and clean and there's no hot sauce stuck to the top when we put these on especially these ones that got a little overfilled. So this other one, I made a really big mess, so I'm gonna take that over to the sink and wash that one off. But you get, the, you get the gist of it. You might be able to see some little tiny air bubbles that are already starting to float to the top. So after about 24 hours, we're gonna see this level drop to probably around here. And then I'll use the excess that's in the smaller bottle and just fill those back up. And then once I do that, then I'll put the little inserts in after I sanitize them and they will be shelf stable. Um, but I do put them in the refrigerator after I open them. Um, but other than that, I just leave them on the counter until I'm ready to open one up. And that is my green ghost hot sauce. Hey y'all, I'm back for one more tip on finishing up your hot sauce. So one step that I forgot to mention and wanted to be sure to let everybody know is after you're done bottling, no matter how long you let them ferment, make sure that a few days to a few weeks after bottling, make sure you just burp the top of the hot sauce on one of your, at least one of your bottles, just to make sure that the fermentation is done. So if it's not done and you twist it off, you'll have um, a hissing noise from the, the pressure releasing and you might have some hot sauce come out the top. So I did that step um, about two weeks after bottling and found there was still some activity in this hot sauce even after nine and a half months. So no matter how long you go, there's a possibility of fermentation not being done. So I was actually really, really surprised that there was still some activity in this hot sauce after nine and a half months. 
but for some reason, anytime I make green hot sauce, they take forever to ferment. So make sure you do that step um, so you don't have a mess on your counter because you could have bottles explode if there's too much pressure. Now, what I'm going to do with this is put it in the refrigerator and that will slow down the fermentation enough that it shouldn't explode any bottles. So I'm just going to do that with this batch. I didn't have that problem with any of the other batches that I made and I made probably six or seven. So this is the only one that's taking a long time to, to ferment. So I'm going to put this in the refrigerator and just use it um, that way. So another thing you can do is pasteurize it and then rebottle it, but I'm I don't want to do that, so I'm not going to go that route, but that's another option you have. Otherwise, if you leave it on your counter, you could just burp it. You'll have to burp all the bottles every few weeks or so, so that you don't make a mess on your counter. And that is what I will leave you with for now. Thanks for watching, and talk to you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.